Hey everyone, Aaron with Elite Water Sports, and today we're learning about heli loops. Heli loops are so awesome, it's a great sensation, and it's also the first entry level into higher altitude looping. It's highly recommended that you watch our first videos, our beginner videos on looping, and really master that while riding or just standing there in need of waist deep water. Now, what is a heli loop? Well, there's so many di different kinds of loops, and a heli loop is primarily where you have the kite above your head in the most vertical position, okay? And it's really hard to get that sensation where you would need a heli loop. A lot of people, um, uh, feel as if like, you know, a heli loop is going to be something out in front of you, but a true traditional heli loop will be right on top. Okay. Now I'm using this guy as a uh, sort of, well, obviously the rider and you got to remember that the kite being above you, it's very similar to being on a pendulum or a ball on a string per se. Okay. So wherever that kite is, your body is always going to want to go underneath that kite okay so if your kites way back here at say like 11 o'clock eventually if you've released from the water guess what you're now going to go back that direction okay so i like to use this analogy just kind of have you guys start to visualize yourself up in the air and notice that you are now a paraglider you're a paraglider with extra long lines okay so it does take a second for you and your body to catch up and go underneath that kite, all right? So as you jump up, your body's always searching for underneath the kite. Now, if you bring the kite back over to the left, you'll swing back to the left. So this is your first stages of actually learning how to jump with higher altitudes. And when you bring into a, um, bring in the mix, a kite loop of sorts, all right? So essentially, if you're bringing that kite out in front of you, all right, you're going to be pulled that direction, right? If you keep that kite up super high, you are now going to be just basically hovering, you know, wherever that kite ends up really super high, you're just going to be hovering wherever you go. So heli loop could be, um, in, in terminology wise, you know, symbolizing a helicopter rotating above you, but also it does give you a sensation as you get better where you fall almost vertical, but controlled. Okay. And that's how you know when you get really good at heli loops. All right. Now, for me, I've noticed that there's two kind of uh, heli loops, ones that I have initiated on purpose, but also just in the sensation of having you slow your path down, going downwind. If you were to heli loop in a specific way, in which I'm about to teach you, you can actually slow how fast you're coming down to the water or how fast you are moving through the air before you touch down in the water, okay? So you can actually use this as a tool to slow your descent and also your forward momentum as you're coming in for a landing, all right? So I have Mini Man hanging out with me today, and I'm first gonna draw it up on the chalkboard, and that way you understand it there, and then we'll use him as a representation, okay? So with a heli loop, essentially it's a normal boost, okay? So you have your rider, big old smile on his face, and he's going big today. And you have, essentially, you're riding to the left for this representation, all right? And kite is at 12 o'clock. So you're riding to the left, and you have just sent it from, let's say, 11 o'clock, all the way back over to two o'clock, okay? Two o'clock is gonna be the maximum you wanna go with that. Some people, 130. As you are releasing from the water, you're now up in the air. If this is just a normal boost. This is going to be the next step, okay? The next step is to send the kite off in the original direction that you were originally traveling somewhere about 11 o'clock again, okay? What that's going to do is cause you to have forward momentum in the direction originally you were traveling, okay? So this is you two, let's say 10, 15, 20 feet above the water. You don't have to go that big. Higher the better, the better the sensation is, of course. And as that kite gets over to 11 o'clock, you are then now sending it back to 12 o'clock, okay? And 12 o'clock is gonna be more in the positioning of behind your head, okay? The kite needs to go behind your head for that 12 o'clock position, okay? 
by tagging and pausing, you want to pause at 12 o'clock and then send the kite around to do the loop, okay? Out in front of you, all right? So again, that's you riding at 11, sending it to 2, 1 2 o'clock, as you release the water and you're hitting your apex, you're almost to the top of your jump, you're then going to send the kite in a pretty direct and aggressive manner back to 11 o'clock. You're not looping it, you're not doing anything with the kite, okay? You're gonna go back to 11 o'clock, that's going to have you swing out in front. That's when you redirect to 12. And as you tag 12, that's when you need to decide how long do I wanna keep it there? The longer you keep it there, the slower you are, the slower your descent's going to be, and the slower the momentum you have traveling through the air. Okay, after you've decided, okay, that's long enough, and we're talking a half a second, okay, a little longer than a half a second, then that's when you bring it out in front of you and you do your traditional back loop, back loop, okay? Now to forward loop, all right? Some heli loops are forward, some heli loops are back, but this is for you to start practicing what a heli loop really is, okay? So we're gonna use Bob here, Mini Man, and Mini Man is riding to the left with the kite at 11 o'clock, all right? He's then gonna send the kite up to two o'clock, all right? Two o'clock's gonna send him up in the air. Notice he's penduling him up, okay? If you hold two o'clock, guess what happens? You'll swing back underneath, right? So we don't want that to happen. We wanna send it to 11 o'clock, all right? Notice as you take off from the water and you send the kite back to 11 o'clock, right? You're almost not moving anywhere but as soon as you reach past 11 o'clock, you're now swinging forward again, okay? And that's what we want, that's our goal, okay? So as we swing forward again, we're gonna then send the kite back to 12. That will slow our forward swing, and that will cause us to swing backwards, okay? As we swing backwards and we pause it, remember we are pausing at 12 o'clock, that'll neutralize our forward motion, our forward momentum, it'll neutralize. Now we're not swinging anywhere, and that's when we initiate a nice tight for a, a back loop, okay? A nice tight back loop will cause you to now have a sensation of falling straight down, but in a controlled manner, and you'll have a nice cushion landing, all right? I hope this makes sense to you, all right? We're gonna overlay some videos. Hopefully you've been watching it, pause it, replay it, go back and forth on the video, okay? And remember, if you know you haven't done loops yet or you haven't watched our previous videos on loops, make sure you backtrack. You wanna start small and then go big, okay? Enjoy the time out in the water, okay? Enjoy the weather, it's the only weather you have. I've heard that saying a couple times. Just get out there and go play, all right? This is Aaron with Elite Water Sports. I'll see you on the water.